today for yet another grace and opportunity from the throne. Today we want to share with you the word of God from Faith Life TV, Dispensational Gospel Mission Quesimate Assembly. I'm Reverend Samuel Tekutego. My message today is titled, or you may put it, the theme of the message is 10 Basic Attitude of True Disciples. 10 Basic Attitude of True Disciples. We have been talking about disciples and discipleship all the time, and yet the answers are yet, uh, most uh, likely to be desired. That is to say that many people are in the church and they do not understand what is disciples. When you talk about disciples, they, they, they talk about the 12 disciples that followed Christ in the contemporary world. Uh, and uh, when you come forward a little, those advanced also things about those in ministry as disciples, but they forget that themselves that Every one of us following after Christ, we are Christ's apprentice, learning to become matured and come to the measure and stature of the Lord Jesus Christ. So today we want to explain one or two things so that we can align ourselves with the true disciples and become very effective for the Lord. I'm taking my test from Luke chapter 6. Verse 39 and 40. Luke 6, 39 and 40. And it reads, And he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into a ditch? The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. Jesus here is explaining the importance of following a leader. And that if you do not follow a good leader, the kind of actions and practice that you can follow. And he's saying to the fact that the teaching was to expand the benefit of being a disciple. So that at least if you are learning from somebody, you may not be able to surpass the person on the field of job. But by perfecting, at least you can be like your master. So becoming a disciple is just as being an apprentice to somebody in the field of work. We call that person a master. So it was not uh, uh, anything error when the disciples called Jesus Christ their master and Lord. For anyone to become like the one who is his master, needed to be a true disciple, a well-trained person. And for somebody to be well-trained, the person must at least be found in this 10 basic attitude. One, the true disciples come to where their master is. That is in context True disciples come to where Jesus is. And reading from Matthew chapter 5 verse 1, on the Mount of Olives, the multitude were there, and Jesus Christ separated himself to the mountains. And the Bible says, and the disciples came to him. So true disciples come to where their master is. So all through disciples of Christ, 
will always come to where Jesus is. So the question is, where are you now? Are you in the midst of the multitude? Or you have separated yourself to go to where Jesus is? He said, where two or three people have gathered together in my name. Now, fellowship is becoming too difficult for you because you do not know that two disciples go to where Jesus is. I'm encouraging you, friend, watching me at this time. You cannot be among the multitude and still be a genuine disciple. All true genuine disciples follow after their master. They go to where their master is. So the disciples came to Jesus on the mount while the multitude were down the hill. Don't join the multitude down the hill. Be a true disciple. Number two, the true disciples follow after Christ. They followed after him. In chapter 8 of Matthew and verses 22 and 23, verses 22 and 23, Matthew chapter 8, verses 22 and 23. And Jesus said unto him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their dead. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. His disciples followed him because they have chosen to follow after him. Before we came to the verse 22, a certain man had an interest in Jesus' ministry and would want to follow. But when he was required to follow, he said, I want to go home and bury my old age parent. And Jesus told him, let the dead bury their dead and come and follow me. Because all the disciples who were following Christ at that time had one or two problems outside their ministry. They have all these problems with their families and wherever they are, they are uh, 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 filled of work where. But because they have chosen to become his disciples, to learn from him, they followed after him. So they followed Jesus wherever he went. Today, I want to tell you, being a disciple is not to be in your home and tell people, I have a clean heart, so I pray in my house and I'm a righteous man. Nobody is condemning you. But uh, the Bible also says that the heart of man is deceitful. So if you want to be a true disciple of Christ, a true learner of Christ, then you must learn to follow wherever the command comes that you go after Christ. Do you want to follow your friends? Do you want to follow your business? Or you want to be a, a true disciple who is a follower? We need to follow after Christ. Number three, the true disciples... Awake the master in times of trouble. When they cross over and they join the master in the ship after Christ has sent the multitude away from mighty nine. By the time we reach verses 25, uh, mighty eight, sorry. By the time we reach verses 25, when they joined Jesus Christ in the ship, there was a, a tempest, storm. And Jesus was asleep while they were paddling. They tried all they could to rescue the boat, but it was all to no avail. Then because they have come to him and followed him, they have the onerous duty to awake him from his sleep. It was not a matter of disturbing him. It was a matter of urgent. Those who learn after their masters, they awake their masters from their sleep. If your master is doing something wrong or if your master is not responding to what he's supposed to be teaching you, you prompt him. So Jesus Christ was sleeping and their lives were at stake. So they prompted him. This means they talk to Christ. And as a Christian, you must learn how to pray. You must learn how to prompt Christ in every situation. Now there is a tempest against your faith and you are nowhere to be found. I want to assure you, if you're a true believer, you will want to follow after 
and you want to awake your master in any time of trouble. And the master responded, and his, their lives received a tremendous miracle, bringing them to the knowledge of who Christ really was. If you want to come to Christ and follow after him, and we will be able to awake him, you will then know, or you will then have the true revelation of Jesus Christ, who he really is. Then we will go to number three. Number three and uh, number four. The true disciple and quest to understand mysteries of issues of their field of work, i.e. the kingdom of God. If you are a true disciple like those who followed Christ, because they are the biggest example for us to follow. When Jesus spoke concerning the seed and the field, he started speaking, speaking to the people, the multitude, with the disciples in parables. And the disciples came to inquire, why are you talking to the people in parables? But Jesus never answered them. He spoke to them until he completely finished. And by the time we reach verse 15 of Matthew 13, Jesus had already explained why the people would not understand him. For he said, it is not for the people to understand, but for them as disciples, it has, it has been given to them to understand. Why? Because they were learning to understand. So they have to probe to understand. And Jesus said, these people have dull ears and uh, 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 blind eyes and they could not hear, they could not see. But for them, it has been given to them to understand. So he started explaining the issue to them from verses 36. From verses 36 of Matthew 13. Verses 36 of Matthew 13. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and the disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the test of the field. And he answered and said unto them, He that soweth on the good seed is the son of man. He started explaining to them. They inquire the mysteries of the kingdom. And Jesus was a good man to reveal it to them because they were learning from him. He was a true master. At least they must learn to understand the kingdom principles just as he understood and gave him himself as a ransom for, for, for sin. Today, we have Christians who do not want to know anything about their faith, anything about their church, anything about their pastor, anything about their Lord, anything about their kingdom. And it behooves on you to make an inquiry about your faith so that you will be well established and defend yourself at any time and defend the gospel and defend the kingdom so that you will be able to preach and teach other people. May God help us. Now, for time's sake, I want to finish on the number five and then gracefully we shall continue from verse six, seven, eight, and nine and ten on next week. So in number five, through disciples work whilst the multitude only enjoy. In Matthew chapter 14, Jesus Christ and the disciples had an encounter. And the encounter was that people have come to follow Christ as usual. They came in for their various wants and needs. And after the night was settling, the disciples appealed to Jesus that these people must be sent away. And Jesus said, no, they did not come to you. They came to me. So he told them they have to be fed. Disciples did their best to bring some five loaves of bread and two fishes. And Jesus prayed and settled them on the grass, on land. And the disciples took the bread and shared. After they have finished, listen to what happened. In verses 22 of Matthew 14 and 23. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before 
him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart and prayed. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. So Jesus Christ has to do another thing, showing an example. The people have finished eating. There are so many people who come to church only to eat and go away. But the true disciples will always follow Christ. Christ separated them and said to them, go before me, you have another task to do. And they did not complain. They joined the ship and went away. While the other disi- all the followers went other side. I'm asking you a question. Are you part of the multitude or you are part of the disciples? Two disciples have an attitude of following after Christ. And even after a day's tedious work, they will still obey Christ to be with him. They join him. They separated themselves. There are so many people in the churches, they only come to enjoy service. They come to enjoy miracles. They come to enjoy other things in the church. But they do not give themselves up to any tax. It was the duty of the disciples to go and find bread to give to the multitude. As a true disciple, you will find a means of having bread for the multitude who are always looking up to Christ for something, one thing or the other. The true disciples followed after Christ. They took the bread from his hand after he has prayed and they shared it to the multitude, thousands of people. They were able even to gather the fragment of it and package it. It was not enough. Christ told them to join him on the other side because they have a duty to perform by following after him. Friend, where do you belong? In the multitude or among the disciples? I'm encouraging you in this time of pandemic that you be a true disciple. You go to where your pastor has a portion for you to go to sales. When you are called to come to a place to pray, don't give reasons, don't give reasons, don't give reasons. Don't try to use your work as an excuse to go away. You are only joining the multitude. True multitude learn of their masters and they become masters themselves. May God help us. May God help us all. Even as you are looking at me, I'm calling you to become a true disciple of Christ. Would you accept Christ into your personal life and follow after him? God willing, next week, we will hear the race. But now I commit you to the hand of the living God. May Christ's countenance brighten on you. May his grace abound unto you. May you receive mercy and pardon. Even in this difficult time. May you call upon him to be saved. May you never be ashamed because you have believed in him. Father, I pray for my hearers this morning. I pray that your name will be glorified in their lives. You came to seek that which is lost. And you came to pick people to follow after you so that they will learn to become like you. Thank you, Lord, for hearing this prayer and answering it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to keep the protocols. Stay safe. Trust in God. Believe in Christ. And you will never be the same. God bless you. This is Faith Life TV. So if you want to follow us, hashtag Faith Life TV. And uh, you will hear or you, s- you can subscribe to our YouTube, Faith Life TV. YouTube, you go to Faith Life TV, you go and meet us there. You can follow after all our messages. If you want to call on me, the number is 244 Zero two four four zero two zero six four three, and the name is Reverend Samotekotegu. God bless you.